Good morning. My name is Brian Gruen. I have the honor of being the, the pastor at the First Congregational Church of Kittery at Kittery Point United Church of Christ. Um, that is Sadie. That's my dog. <laughs> I introduce her to you now because she will probably be making some guest appearances in this video. We're here to offer what we can in this time of pandemic to try to provide spiritual resources that might help all of us on our way um, as we struggle through this time of crisis. Uh, Sadie, hey, Sadie, what's that? Um, and so we've been talking about trees. We've been talking about looking at trees and by understanding that a healthy living tree has to accomplish many things all at once in order to be the full healthy tree that God made it to be. Human beings also have to do a lot of things all at once in order to be healthy, full human, be be human beings made in the image of God um, living in this world. So we've already talked about um, a couple. Can you see this? I hope you can see this. We've already talked about um, looking at these inner layers, this uh, core of humility and then trust um, and how those are central to being humans in the world. And from, from naming those things, humility and trust, then we name spiritual practices. What are the ways in which we practice those things? Identity, um, tears, confession, mourning, grieving. And now today we're going to pull back a little bit and look at the outer ring of the tree um, to talk about a third component. A third component that is central to our humanity and for us that is service. We have named this outer ring of the tree um, as our call to service. Um, in other words, everything that goes within the tree all or within the human, all of those practices, they're all going to lead us out towards service. Service of ourselves, service of our community, service of others. And when we talk about service, we need to be clear about what we're really talking about. You know, there's community service, there's, um, there's ways of serving one another and being of service. But in our tradition, when we talk about service, we're really talking about how do we practice using our power. For us, service is the spiritual practice of power. Now, this is the part of like, tree explaining that's going to require the least. Uh, we know what to call the outer layer of a tree. It's called the bark. It's easy. We all know what bark is. Bark is that layer of the tree on the outside. It, it serves two purposes. It protects the tree from outside danger and threat, and it preserves all the moisture and all the nourishment that the tree needs in order to keep living. The bark. So why would we name that outer ring as service for us? Is service meant to be defensive? Is service meant to preserve ourselves? Because I always thought service was about doing nice things for other people. Well, clearly it's actually both. You know, when you're thinking about how to be human and you're thinking about what you need in order to preserve yourself, you might think of all manner of things that have to do with you, with putting yourself at the center. Well, I need a job. I need to be able to provide food and, and pay the bills for me and my family. Um, I need to be physically safe. Um, I need the world to work in a certain way so that I can find the, the resources and, the, and the, the other things that I need to live. And that's fine. That's true. It is about you. Um, and then when you think about being defended, when you think about what it requires to defend you from outside threats, I think one of the really unsettling things about this time of pandemic is it's made the world feel a lot more unsafe for all of us across the board. We know that not everyone who contracts coronavirus um, suffers from it in the same way. But we also know that there's no guarantee of safety when you contract the coronavirus. We know that some of us are already aware of our pre-existing conditions that make us really vulnerable and make us really at risk for, for the worst of it. Some of us just don't even know that we have those underlying conditions until it's too late. So one of the unsettling things about pandemic is it really makes all of us think twice about what is safe and what is not. So the things that we used to take for granted, we don't anymore. We give a lot of forethought, a, a lot of preparation, a lot of care and concern to doing those things. And so when we think about defending ourselves, that can also seem like it's all about us, like it's putting us at the center and it's about um, keeping others out or actively pushing against or resisting outside threat.
for us as people of faith, our God really challenges these lines that we draw between what's about me and what's about others. The only thing God has ever asked us to do is to love the Lord our God with all we are, and a second commandment like it, to love our neighbor as ourselves. When we put that central commandment at the center of who we are as human beings, we find that there's really no difference between doing what's right for ourselves and doing what's right for others. You know, God didn't give us the central commandment of take care of yourself at all costs and ignore everybody else. Nor did God say, go out there and love and serve others better than you do for you. No, 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 no. God didn't say, give me more of your time and your energy and your attention than what you give to you. No, 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 no. God calls us to mutual relationship. God calls us to love our God with all we are and love our neighbors as ourselves. Which means if there's this third thing that is sort of assumed, it's assumed that we know how to love ourselves. It's assumed that we are taking care of ourselves well already. And I've been around enough to know that is not necessarily true. We exhaust ourselves, we stress ourselves out, we are filled with anxiety and fear, not because we are selfish, but because we are trying to find ways of making our lives meaningful and purposeful. We're trying to figure out what makes life worth living, what makes life good. And friends, I think one of the biggest issues we have is that we are not used to talking about this as if it's about wielding power. We talk about service as a good thing to do. It's a good thing to do. It's, it's nice. It's good to think of others, to sacrifice your own time, to go do something nice for somebody else, to be of service to your community, to stop being selfish for a moment and think about others for a change. This is how we frame the conversation about service. And so what I think is really powerful and important, and for me, helpful, about thinking of service as the thing that both preserves and protects me and my community, it's really about power. Service is the practice of how we use our power. Are we using our power to deplete ourselves? Are we using our power to oppress others? Or can we see service as a way of using power to preserve everyone, to defend everyone? Those of us who have been born and growing up in this post-World War II era, we have been conditioned and trained to think of everything as an issue of um, Peace achieved through violence. Safety achieved through a strong defense. But the more I live in the world, and the more we study these ongoing systemic issues of injustice, the more we find that um, my well-being is completely tied up in your well-being. Our ability to live holistically and peacefully and healthily here in Kittery Point is entirely dependent on someone's ability to live with all the same rights and humanity and expectation in any inner city in America. We're all deeply connected. God did not put any of us on this earth to live on our own, by ourselves, for ourselves. God put us here to love and serve one another as we love ourselves, the two are linked. So in that way, I actually only know how to care for myself well if I am learning how to be of service to my neighbor well. I can only learn to love and serve my neighbor well if I already know how to love and serve myself. They're connected. So let's stop thinking of service as a one-time event or something we do a couple times a year or something we do once a month when we volunteer with a, with a committee or an outside organization. Service is not about any single action. 
It's about understanding the power you have in your life and practicing how you use that power. Are you using it to defend and repel and to separate yourself from others? Are you using it to pour out everything you have to do something nice and be of use for someone else because you think so little of your own life? We need to be able to practice both. We need to be able to practice saying God has put us on this earth to be of service to one another, not for their sake, but for our own. Because I am most fully human when you are most fully human. I am loved and served when you are loved and served. So I hope in this week and in the weeks to come, we can think about power. We can stop telling ourselves the narratives. Oh, well, I, I'm powerless in this situation. There's nothing I can do. I don't have any effect over this. You're God's beloved child, created in the image of God, put on this earth to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You have immense power. Collectively, we have tremendous power. Collectively, as a human species, we have utilized our power to do great and terrible things across this planet. Imagine what we can do if we practice wielding that power for the sake of loving ourselves, loving our God, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Mm. I'm excited to have these conversations with you. And next week, we'll talk more about the other practices that we can do. But for this week, let's focus on our power, because you have it, and I have it. Maybe this week, we can find new ways of wielding it together. Peace and grace be with you.